Well, hello once again, my friends, fellow Star Trek fans. I hope you're doing well, and I hope you're cool during this hot weather. I finally got a video for you, another video regarding the Eagle Moss Build the Enterprise D. And there's a backstory to this. We got finally shipment nine in. And there's a little bit of a story to this. I should have had this last month to show you guys. But there's a story, so let me go ahead and explain to you. I need to put the camera on the tripod for a minute. Okay. I was starting to think that Eagle Moss hated me. <laughs> Let me explain why. So I'm all set to get shipment number nine. So I'm waiting and I'm excited. So when I finally get a box that says Eagle Moss in the mail, I'm all excited. Well, I open up the box and I get the invoice for shipment nine. But when I open up the box, I get the wrong parts packs. This was actually from parts pack number four. So they sent me 13. Number 11. Number 14. And let's see, there is one more in here. Number 12. And again, it's shipment number four. So they send me all of this. So I open it up expecting to do shipment nine and make a video for you guys. Instead, I get this. So, okay, so I contact Eagle Moss and I tell them that shipment nine is missing. I got the wrong things. Okay, no big deal. So what they do then is they send me an envelope. I open it up and it is shipment nine. So I'm all happy. I'm like, okay, great, it's all set. Now I'm thinking I'm gonna get another shipment for the parts packs for shipment nine. Don't get anything. That was all that there was. So I contact Eagle Moss again and tell them that shipment nine is messed up. So I explain the situation for them. So I finally get a thing in the mail. I open it up. And again, it's the wrong one. It's number nine. So now I'm thinking, oh my goodness, what, what Eagle Moss must really hate my guts. <laughs> or they just don't like me for some reason. Finally, I call, I contact them again. I explain the situation to them, and finally, finally, we got the right shipment with the parts packs, 31, 32, 33, and 34. So there was kind of a backstory to that. So I apologize for rambling, but I just wanted to share that with you guys, and I don't know if you guys have the same kind of issue out there, um, let me know. Anyway, let's move on, and we're going to move on to shipment nine, and I'm going to show you guys what it comes with. Okay, so let me show you guys what this is supposed to come with. The STEXX 031, 032, 033, and 034. So we got this. This is all set. And we've got the magazine. And of course, I'm gonna go with it, uh, go through it with you guys. So we'll put that aside for now. And let's see, what do we got? We got issue 31, the parts pack. And you can see we have some zip ties. I'm thinking that's for that nice uh, lump of spaghetti underneath the saucer section. You can see a couple more of escape pods and another section of the primary hull and check out this check that out guys the big pc board and <laughs> look at all the attachments that are going to go on there so that's 31 uh let's see we got 32 
you can see it looks like there's a, a reflective piece for the back of the primary hull. We've got more windows. We got some more escape pods. And the way this is angled, it looks like um, it would go for the dorsal hull. And we have some more of the uh, primary hull. So we got 33, and I will open up the uh, packages and go through them with you guys. I just want to give you a preview. You guys can see. This is looking, if I'm not mistaken, this could be where the, uh, the impulse engine is going to go, but we'll see. We got a wire. We got some clear windows and some dark windows. And windows for the dorsal hull or source of pylon. And finally, we have issue 34 or parts pack 34. And you can see it's got a lot of clear windows dark windows, it's got a reflective background, and we got some lights with the uh, escape pods, and we got another section of the primary hull. So, we got all the stuff. So is what I usually like to do with you guys, is I like to go through, and we'll check out the magazine. So this is issue nine, you can see the photo of the model <clears throat> in this issue. And I love the little goodies, the little tidbits in regards to the series. And the first thing we're gonna notice is we see the stage 31 parts list. So we got the saucer PCB board and that's saucer PCB one. And we got another section of the hull. And we have some zip ties. Let's see, 31F, they call them cable tie. Seven of those. So, next parts list is for section 32, or parts pack 32. You can see the, the hull. And we have some more of the smaller parts. We got the windows and we have the escape pods. And there are six screws, three CP, three DM. Parts pack number 33. You can see another set of windows that appears to be for the dorsal hull. And we got 34. Nice. So we're going to start the assembly. Stage 31 assembly. Light up your entire saucer build to date by connecting all its lights to a single printed circuit board. You can see the areas that are going to be affected. The illustrations are colored to help you identify the parts as you go along. Red is used for the screws, the direction arrows, and connection points. Yellow is for the new parts in each step. Gray shows the assembly so far, and blue shows the illuminated parts. You can see the circuit board, or PCB board one, has several different types of sockets. Use the image below to reference where you use and fit the various plugs. So I'm looking forward to doing that. That's gonna be fun. Again, this is gonna be a lot like the um, Polar Lights 1350 Enterprise lighting kit. You can see where the mounting of the circuit board is gonna go in a primary hull. And then we start to attach all the wires, which will be nice because then it's all gonna light up. So that'll be really fun. Step D. And you can see where you're gonna bundle the wires to make it neater. Take the two plugs from stage 22 with the red and black, white and yellow cables and insert them into the A sockets on the PCB board. So this is gonna be really fun. Step E, more of the wires going in. 
and the tying off of all the cables because the bottom of the saucer section really is looks like a plate of spaghetti with all that uh, all the wires everywhere over to step F test all the connections made by this stage by plugging the battery into the out one on the saucer PCB all of the saucer lights fitted so far should illuminate you can see everything that's going to light up very nice that's going to be a really fun build so moving on to stage 32 link the left neck panel to the larger battle section neck build and assemble another section of the upper saucer paneling and again you can see the areas that are going to be affected by this part of the instructions <clears throat> putting in more windows and escape pods and we have the reflective background and the insertion of the lights and we're going to be building on the bottom of the dorsal hull or saucer pylon or neck whichever you prefer <clears throat> moving on to stage 33 assembly the distinctive shape of the deck panel and its stage marks it out as part of the saucer starboard impulse engine housing so it was the impulse engine part of the saucer section which is nice that we're going out that far you can see adding the screws into the back with the addition of the lights and as usual we test the connections on to stage 34 assemble another aft section of the upper saucer and then complete installation of the sweeping left neck panel and you can see we got more windows and escape pods and we've put in a lot of windows so far a lot of escape pods too you can see where that's going to go on the primary hull. Putting the screws, again we put one light bulb in and we test it. Testing is always fun. <clears throat> Moving on to step B, you can see the lights that are coming out. And then I go into the reflective paneling. Finally, thread the two sets of panel lights, 34G, through the other side of the skeletal structure as shown and plug them into the battle section PCB board. Remember, there is a, um, we put a circuit board into the saucer pylon. You can see, got to loosen all the screws. Then you can see where the BM screws are going to go in. And this is going to be really exciting, as you can see the, uh, the dorsal hull start to take shape and that's it for the instructions so moving on to one of the things that I enjoy very much are the little tidbits of the episodes this is the measure of a man concepts from this celebrated courtroom drama are revisited throughout Star Trek the next generation and into Star Trek Picard you guys remember that um, they were considered data they were questioning whether he was self-aware enough to be a life form. Episode 2.9 premiered February 13th, 1989, written by Melinda Snodgrass. When a prominent scientist argues that data is an item of property of Starfleet, can they, can they can disassemble. Captain Picard demands a hearing into the second officer's rights as a sentiment individual. And that is where Commander Riker, unfortunately, he didn't want to do it, but he had to be the prosecuting um, representative, and he took off the arm, or he asked Data to take the arm off to show that he was more machine than um, self-aware individual. And she was the judge, Amanda McBroom, as Captain Philippa, how do you pronounce Lou voice? Clyde Kasatu, the first of three appearances as Admiral Nakamura, and Brian Brophy as Commander Bruce Maddox. And Mr. Data ultimately ended up winning his freedom.
stunt performer Victor Paul plays Picard's fencing opponent. In this deleted scene, Paul also doubled as Picard's opponent in Will Always Have Paris. You guys remember that was like a holodeck kind of episode. Starfleet was founded to seek out new life. Well, there it is waiting. Talking at Mr. Data during the trial. In this deleted scene, Data presents Geordi with a Sherlock Holmes pipe. A scene in elementary, dear Data. Brent Spiner, Jonathan Frakes, and Robert Scherer work on the scene when Riker removes Data's arm. And I was talking about that scene earlier. That was pretty convincing to try to persuade the judge that Mr. Data was a machine instead of a self-aware being. And that brings us to the next episode they talk about, The Dauphin, telling a simple love story called for lots of TLC from the VFX team. This is episode 2.10, premiered February 20th, 1989, written by Scott Rubenstein and Leonard Mladeno. Wesley falls in love with the young leader of a war-torn planet before learning that she and her guardian are powerful shapeshifters. You can see this object. Dan Curry's painting of Salia in her true form. It's interesting. Will Wheaton and Jamie Hubbard performing against a blue screen within the Enterprise shuttle bay set. I love those behind the scenes pictures. And we move on to the next episode they speak of. This is Contagion. This is a really good episode. Two foreshadowed ships return for real and Picard picks a pair of enduring character traits. This is episode 2.11. Premiered March 20th, 1989, written by Steve Gerber and Beth Woods. Deep in the neutral zone, the Enterprise faces twin threats from an adv advanced computer virus in a Romulan warbird. Carolyn Seymour, who plays Taris, appeared twice more in The Next Generation and twice in Star Trek Voyager. And then we have some of the, that, that's really cool. Let's see, what is that? The recreated Iconian landscape without atmosphere, death map, and isolated buildings from the final effect as seen on the screen. So that would be this. This was the final one. And you can see the different stages. And that being the finished product, the effects are always great on this show. As for this, Rick Sternbach's concept design for the Iconian translation device handled by Captain Varley in one of the Yamato's mission logs. So that's pretty cool. Fate protects fools, little children, and ships named Enterprise. Commander Riker. On to the next one, the episode called The Royale. You guys remember, it was like uh, that building that was down, they had gone through the, what do you call those doors that kind of spin? Just the turning doors and they had gone in and it was kind of like a, a hotel atmosphere where they had uh, gambling. And you guys remember they had the astronaut when they found him up in the, uh, I think it was one of the floors in bed and he had long since passed. But this episode is 2.12, premiered March 27th, 1989, written by Keith Mills. A melodramatic recreation of a 20th century Las Vegas casino becomes a prison for Riker, Data, and Mr. Worf. Trapped in a strange fictional world he didn't recognize, writer Tracy Torme took his name off this episode. In the original episode, Richie's uniform bore the real-life NASA mission patch from 1972. This was changed for the 2012 remastered version. 
And that was the door that I was trying to think of the name for. A concept sketch, the Royal's entrance, which came to represent the revolving door and ideas for the episode. Revolving door, duh. <laughs> We've been expecting you, a trio of foreign gentlemen. So that was an interesting episode. And that brings us to time squared. Planned as a puzzle to reintroduce Q. This episode introduced a new shuttle design instead. This is episode 2.13, premiered April 3rd, 1989, written by Kurt Michael Benzmiller. When a traumatized future version of Captain Picard is found adrift in the shuttle pod, the vessel's logs reveal that the Enterprise is on a course for immediate destruction. Of course, you guys remember, they weren't very happy when they found out the Enterprise was destroyed, but Picard left in a shuttle pod. He should have been the one to stay with the ship, so that kind of rubbed them the wrong way, especially Mr. Worf, but it ultimately was revealed that he did the right thing for the ship. You can see the introduction of the shuttle pods. Two of the set designer, Richard McKenzie's technical drawings for the Type 15 shuttle pod, plus concept art by Rick Sternbach. I love these. They're so cool. A lot of questions. Number one, damn few answers. Jean-Luc Picard. And that brings us to the Icarus Factor. <clears throat> I believe this is the one with Riker's father. Strip back the Klingon pain stakes, uh, pain, pain sticks, excuse me, and future martial arts in this episode is human interest all the way. Episode 2.14, April 24th of 1999 was his premiere date, written by David Asiel and Robert McCullough. Riker is reunited with his estranged father after 15 years, while Worf reaches a milestone in his life as an adult Klingon. You can see where they do that on a holodeck for Mr. Worf. Klingon painsticks reappear in Season 4, Reunion, and in Star Trek Enterprise. With all due respect, be gone, sir, Commander Worf said to Captain Picard. TV news anchor and Star Trek fan John Tesh and Klingon makeup for his uncredited cameo. We've got another cool looking concept art. Rick Sternbach's design for the Ambo Jitsu Arena was realized on the shuttle base set. And that's it for this episode, uh, excuse me, this issue. So this is number nine. And we have the instructions, and we have some little goodies for you guys in regards to Star Trek, the next generation. So let's go ahead, and we're going to open up and look into some of these parts packs. So let's see, which we'll do number, we'll do them in order. Let's do 31 first, so we'll put 34 aside. And we'll do number 31. And that's the one where we got the circuit board in it. So, without further ado, all right, let's get this beautiful circuit board. And it's in a small tray, so let's get it out. Look at that, guys. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So twenty-six. About thirty-seven connections on this circuit board. This is really, really going to be fun. Beautiful. Okay, what else do we have in this? We've got another section of the hull. And this is metal. And again, 
want you guys to see the Aztecing. Very pretty. Speaking of Aztecing, some of you guys have asked me about my progress on my 1350 scale USS Enterprise refit from Star Trek The Motion Picture. And yes, I am still working on that. I'm still doing the uh, the nacelle. It's been um, pretty busy around here, so I haven't really had time. And it's very painstaking to put the masks on for that. But I am still working on that. Matter of fact, I should have an update on that model soon. You can see this one is probably going to be just a connector. Most likely to connect the boards. And we've got some more escape pods. And we have some screws. These look like FM screws. These will be going into metal. And let's see, now that brings us to the top section where we have more windows. You guys can see there are some that are going to be lit, some that are going to be dark. And this is going to go into the dorsal hull or the neck. And we have little zip ties to keep the wires nice and neat. And there's seven of those. Is that everything in this? Yep, that's everything in section or parts pack number 31. Okay, that brings us to issue number 32. So let's get this open. see we have more lighting with the double bulbs and the part that's going to go onto the circuit board or PCB board and let's see we've got some DM screws and it looks like the reflective backing for the section of the hull and what else we got? We have windows. You guys know, if you're doing this model, there are lots and lots of windows on the Enterprise. We got the darkened room, and we have the lit room. And we have more escape pods as well. And we have the um, reflective backing for the dorsal hull, or saucer pylon, or net, whichever you prefer. And we've got escape pods. The detail on this model is so, so cool. Very, very, very dramatic. We have a packet of the CP screws. Of course, the P, meaning it's going to go into plastic. And we got another metal section of the primary hull. Again, I want you guys to be able to see that. Beautiful Aztecing work. Gorgeous. And is that everything in this one? Yes. That's everything in issue number 32. And you guys can see the back. Got the same kind of information on all of them. And that brings us to pack number 33. So let's get this open. And we got the saucer section that's closest to the impulse engines, and you can see 
This part is plastic. For some reason, the, the plastic, um, for me anyway, is more difficult to put in the escape pods and windows on than the metal parts. I don't know if it's because the uh, static electricity makes them jump more, but that's just me anyway. And this is U302, that's on the back. And I'll show you guys the stripe and the Aztec. -y. Now see, this is on already. I was hoping the registration decals would be on, but we're going to have to put it on in the form of a sticker. And you can see the backing. You'll see where the lights are going to go. And again, the little nub that holds the bulbs in place so you don't have to glue them. And we got another light. Again, this is two of them. And you can see the, the four prong clip that goes into the PCB board. And we've got more escape pods. Lots of escape pods on the Enterprise as well. And this section, well, let me show you the screws first. We've got BP screws. And we have more windows. You can see the ones that are going to be lit and the ones that are going to be dark. This is um, on screen, so they're screen accurate. That's why when we put in the windows, I like to follow the diagram so that they're screen accurate. And speaking of the windows, we have two more sections. Now, you guys may or may not have noticed so far that they actually come in different sizes. Some of these windows are longer than others. So you've got the room lights that are dark and the room lights that are going to be lit. And that's everything in this section in number 33. And that brings us to issue number 34. We're up to 34 already. So let's get this open. And guess what's in it, guys? More windows, escape pods, and lights. got some screws. We've got BM screws. And we've got two sections of the clear windows. And these are the shorter windows. And let's see, the next one, we have more screws. These are BP the P, meaning that they're going to go into plastic. And these windows are the shorter windows and they're the dark room. And this section has more screws. This is an envelope that has CP screws. Very nice. And we have a background for what again could be the dorsal hull or the saucer pylon, the left side. You can see where the lights are going to go in. Looking forward to do that build. And we have this section. We've got more escape pods. We've got five on this tree. And we've got more lighting. We've got two bulb cables and let's see yep they're all two bulbs dual bulb lighting cables and there are three of them to illuminate our wonderful enterprise And it looks like finally we have 
another section of the primary hull. And this is plastic. You can see the, the aztec -y. So we got more windows and escape pods to go in there. And you can see where the lighting is gonna go. And is that everything? That appears to be everything in issue number 34. And that, my friends, is everything that's included in shipment number nine. We have the issues 31, 32, 33, and 34. We have the addition of another circuit board. And I think that's the second circuit board we get so far, I think. Um, you guys saw the magazine and all the goodies inside. So my next video, my friends, we're gonna put it all together and we're gonna work on the build. And I'm looking forward to that. You can see we're going to be working on this section and the primary hull, so it should close this off. And I hope you guys are having as much fun watching my videos as I am making them. So until the build video, which will be coming out very, very, very soon, I'll talk to you later. Thanks for watching and have a great day.